Hey guys, thanks for joining me for episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is a game by Jazzco Games. It takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half to play, and it is a one to six player, fully cooperative board game. So all the players are working together to defeat the game itself. So in the game, the players are taking on the roles of Buffy and her Scooby gang, and they're back in Sunnydale, and the uh, another big bad is out there trying to destroy everything and send the world into another apocalypse. So throughout the game, the players are going to be fighting off vampires, demons, trying to find the monsters of the week and defeating them, gaining the clues from them that will finally show them the location of where the big bad is that they've chosen for this game. If they're able to defeat the big bad before the apocalypse track fills with townies and wounds, then they have won the game. So my opinions of this game so far, I found this one interesting. I was a big fan of Buffy growing up, so I was really interested to see what their take on that was. And I do feel like they've they've captured some of the feeling of the, the series very well. Uh, the game never lets up from the, the moment you, you enter into it, uh, the way it's set up. There's always baddies out there. There's always things fighting you that you always feel like you, you're never going to quite catch up, which is definitely encapsulating the uh, TV series. There was never, in that whole series, there was never a minute where you could sit back and just breathe a sigh of relief and feel like, all right, the, the team has cap is gotten where they need to go. They've gotten all the baddies taken care of, and that is definitely what this game is. Uh, they hit you hard, they hit you fast, and they just never let up. Um, so that being said, I like I said, I did find the game interesting. There was a couple of, of things that I didn't care for in the game, uh, but again, these are my opinions. So the first thing that I wasn't a big fan of is the way that uh, the player's actions work especially the special action. That's the one that really kind of got me because every time you do the special action, which you're forced to do, each player has to use their special action uh, each round, whether they're using it as a special or a basic action, doesn't matter. At the end of that action, then they have to resolve an event card. And of course, the event cards are always bad. They're always bringing out new enemies and they're always usually putting some sort of condition on the players or the board or, or something. Which I understand, and I, I do respect that. I just wish there was a different way, because you, as the players, you always feel like you're hurting your team doing that. And and that feeling just never goes away. At least, and again, like I said, this is my opinion. Other than that, like I said, the game, it does a very good job of representing Buffy. The team, it plays unique, and it's definitely a, a challenging game, so you're never going to feel like you're just breezing through it. And it gives plenty of variety, as there's a number of different baddies from the uh, TV series that you guys will remember. Uh, obviously, you can play the iconic characters in the this series, and there is even an expansion that adds even more to it. So I would recommend checking it out if you're a fan of Buffy or you're interested in these kind of games. Uh, it just depends on what kind of play style you're looking for. Um, but overall, like I said, I did enjoy the, the game. But again, these are my opinions. I also love to hear your guys' thoughts. Is this a game that you guys have played or interested in? Uh, if you like it or didn't like it, what were your reasons either way? I'd love to hear those thoughts in the comments below. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. There are three main decks that the characters are going to be interacting with throughout the game. The first one are the item cards, which there are seven item cards contained within the deck. We have crosses, wooden stakes, tomes, garlic, magic supplies, holy water, and weapons. Each of these items is going to list the name of the item at the top, an image of it, any additional effects that it has. Some items will grant you a new action that you can perform with that item. And other items will also have a discard effect. If you discard the item, you'll be able to do that effect. Then we have the artifact deck, which will contain very powerful weapons that the characters can use throughout the game. There's also a couple of cards in this deck that are negative, so you want to be careful how much you draw from the artifact deck, because you may end up getting one of those items. Finally, we have the event deck. When a character is required to draw a card from the event deck, they will resolve the, ve the events listed on that card in order from top to bottom, resolving each one of those effects, if able. And then if you are ever called to make an event check, you'll use the symbol at the bottom of the card. Player setup is very straightforward. Each player is going to select one or more characters they'd like to play as. At the top of each character board is the name of the character and their starting location on the map as well as any starting card item cards that they're going to have. So Buffy here is going to start with a wooden stake item card. 
Going down the side of the card is each of the characters has four basic actions. They're all the same, and we're going to cover these a little bit later in the video. And then we also have each character has their own special action that they can perform, which is unique to that character. To start off with, each character is going to get their three action tokens and one special token. And then each character is also going to get a standee to mark their location on the map. The second set of cards we have here are the enemy type cards. So the first one are the Monster of the Week cards, and at the beginning of the game you're going to deal out one of these, and throughout the game you're going to try to hunt down the three of these in order to find the clues that you need to face the big bad. So the top of each of these cards is going to be the name of the enemy, then you're going to have the location the enemy is going to appear in. So with Ethan here, he's going to appear in the crypt, and then each enemy is going to have an effect on the game. So you're going to go through there and resolve that effect and uh, apply it each time it comes up. And then each enemy is also going to have required items that the heroes must collect in order to try to fight and defeat him. When a hero has these items and is in the space with the monster of the week, they can perform a fight action. And that will require them to do an event check where they will flip over an event card. If one of these symbols comes up, then they have defeated that en the uh, monster of the week. And they can go ahead and place a clue card in that location. Then we have the evil card. At some point during the game, the characters may go evil, and if they do, they're gonna give you're gonna give this character or the character that goes evil this card, and they will have to resolve the effects of the card during their turn as their action. Then this card will be discarded and they'll revert back to their normal selves. Finally, we have each big baddie in the game is gonna have six different plot cards. At the beginning of the game, the baddie that you've selected, as you guys will see. We'll get his plot cards, they'll shuffle up, and as the players gain clue card or the clear clue tokens, they're gonna flip over one of these plot cards per clue token, and they're all gonna have negative effects on the characters. They'll make the game a little harder until these these plots are defeated. Which again, they have the required items that the character must have when they're on the same space as the big bad. And then they'll do an event check again if they can solve that event and get one of those symbols. They have defeated this particular plot card and it is removed from the game. And this also counts as the big bad's wounds. There is also a small selection of tokens within the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at how these work. So the first set of tokens we have are the towny tokens, which count as the civilians within Sunnydale that we're trying to rescue. On the back of each of these tokens is the wound tokens. And if you ever run out of these tokens, the game is over. Then we have the two different types of baddies in the game, which are the demons and the vampires. On the back of each of their tokens is their stun side. Then we have the garlic token, which is going to be attached to the garlic item card, as you guys can see here. And that will have an effect on the game, which I'll go into later. Then we have the monster of the week token, which will go on the game board and mark where the monster of the week is located. And these are the ones we're going after to gain clue tokens that will help us find the big bad at the end of the game. Then we have the first player token that will mark the first player of each round. During setup, each player is going to either select or randomly choose a big bad that they're going to face for the game. Each big bad has its own six card plot deck that will be shuffled up and placed next to their tile. And each big bad's tile is going to have the name of that big bad at the top, the effects at the end of each round that big bad has, when the big bad is finally summoned, when the players find the three clues, the, these effects will be resolved. And then after he is summoned, he, his special effect will come into play. And this will be resolved each time there is an event card that is resolved. At the bottom of the card, that symbol will match up to the symbols here, and you'll just follow the effects of that symbol, each event card that comes up. The last thing I want to cover real quick is the game board itself. So Sunnydale has a number of different locations that you guys will remember from the show. And each of these locations will have the name of that location. Some of them will have an effect that the players can use by spending an action to activate that location. And other locations will have different effects on the players throughout the, either the player or enemy turns, which are outlined at the bottom of the location and have this little red exclamation point here. You'll also notice that there are arrows connecting the locations, which will show adjacency from one location to another and will help you in moving the baddies to determine where they're going to go and in what areas they can move. Then down at the bottom of the board is going to be the Apocalypse track, and it's going to have a number of spots that you'll place either townies that have been killed or wounds. One important thing is that townies, when placed on the Apocalypse track, can never be removed by the players. Wounds can be healed though, so if you ever have a choice between getting a county, uh, townie killed or taking a wound, always take the wound as you can heal those.
As the game progresses, this chart is going to be filled with townies and wounds. If it ever reaches the end space, if this space is ever take, uh, filled up, then the game is automatically over and the players lose. Now you're also going to notice a couple of little names that are attached to some of these numbers. And that is at the end of the game, based on how well the players do, that is their final score, townie being the worst and slayer being the best possible score that players can get. So let's go ahead and run through setup real quick. So first off, you're going to place the game board out in the middle of the, the table, and then you're going to place out all the different tokens you're going to use throughout the game. Then go ahead and shuffle up each of the decks, the artifact, item, event, and monster of the week decks, and place those out as well. Then each player can choose the characters that they like to play as. I'm going to go ahead and set up as a three-player game, so I've got three characters out. Each character gets three action tokens and a special token, and their starting item. And then we can also place them out on the board where they're located based on their cards. Then we're going to go ahead and draw the first Monster of the Week card, and it is the Gentleman. So the Gentleman appear in UC Sunnydale. So we're going to go ahead and place the Monster of the Week token there. And then let's go ahead and check their special effects. It says the players cannot speak while the Gentleman in play. Any player that speaks must place a Wound token on the Apocalypse track. And we're going to need to have one of our characters have two weapon, icon, uh, two weapon items in order to try to fight them. So we're going to go ahead and place this off to the side here. And then the last thing we need to do for setup is to choose the uh, big bad that we're going to face. So we're going to go ahead and get, go against the master for this game, as he's the one that's recommended for the first game. You're also going to place out his six plot cards, and you can go ahead and place his token over here, because he won't actually come out until we find the three clues to bring him out. Then, based on the number of players, you're going to go ahead and draw and resolve an event card for each player that is playing. So we have three players, so we have to do three event cards. And we're only going to resolve the top two. We don't have to resolve the bottom effect for each of the events. So this first one says that a vampire lurks in the magic box. So we're going to place a vampire there. And then it says a townie needs help in Shadowville, uh, Shadow Valley Vineyards. Okay, and it doesn't matter with the townies, man or, or woman, it has no effect. Our second event is a demon terrorizes Sunnydale High. And a vampire lurks in the Sunnydale Cemetery. And the third and final event card is that a demon is in... Uh, you, uh, you see Sunnydale and we have a townie in the Rosedale Cemetery so we got some stuff to fight Giles is in some big trouble here he's got all kinds of stuff going on so then we the last thing is to assign one of the players the first player token so we're going to go ahead and give it to Willow and have her start the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer is played over an undefined number of rounds during each round, the players are going to go through four phases, which are beginning of the round, player turns, monster activation, and end the round effects. This is going to continue until the game is either won or lost. So now we're ready to move into the game. Before that, there's one other thing I want to cover. The game is break basically broken down into a couple different sections. First off, our initial goal is to defeat the monsters of the week. We have to defeat three of them and, and, and also pick up their clue tokens in order to summon the big bad, at which point then the game will shift and our main focus will be defeating the big bad. If we're able to do that before the, apoc the apocalypse track fills with tokens, then we're going to probably win the game. Otherwise, if the apocalypse track ever fills with tokens, we are going to lose the game automatically. Let's go ahead and head into the game now. So at the beginning of each round, the players are going to get to take their turns by spending action tokens, and this is going to continue passing from player to player until all the players have used all of their action tokens, including their special tokens. So during a player's turn, they must flip over one token, whether it is a normal uh, action token or a special token, and they can also perform any number of free actions. So Willow is our first player, so let's go ahead and head into her turn. Now she has a choice of four basic actions, which are to search, fight, use, or move. She could also choose to perform her special action, which would allow her to do either the special action that is specific to her, or she could also use it to do a basic action if she wants. 
Now she can also do a number of free actions, which were are that if she's in the same space as another character, she can freely give them items or trade items with them. She can also use any of the cards that she has for free action effects, such as with Buffy, her wooden stake, she can choose to discard that to dust the vampire in her space as a free action, so it would not cost an action token to do that, but it would cause her to discard that stake card. So with Willow here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at each of the four main basic actions. So the first one is to search, which will allow her to gain two item cards from the item deck. And each character has a maximum hand size of three cards. So if they ever go over that, you have to immediately discard down to three. And you're not allowed to use those item cards in order to discard them. You must simply discard them without using them. Then the second option she has is to perform a fight action, which will allow her to stun one vampire in her location, or that will allow her to attempt to slay the monster of the weak or big bad in her location. The third action she can choose from is a use action, which as long as there are no enemies in her location, she can choose to use that location's ability. And then the final action is a move action, which will allow her to move her character anywhere on the board, and she is not restricted by having monsters in her location or the location she's moving to. And then, like I said, the final option would be to use her special action, which will allow her to perform her special action or one of the four basics. But keep in mind, when a character uses the special token, no matter if it's for its effect or a basic effect, they must also have draw and resolve an event card after they're done performing that effect. So let's go ahead with um, Willow. We're going to go ahead and spend an action to stun this vampire here. That way then she is able to use that location's ability next turn. So there's nothing else that Willow wants to do during her turn. So we're going to go ahead and move over to the next character to take their action. So Buffy is our next one to go. So she's just going to go ahead and spend a regular action to perform a search. So she's going to get to draw the top two cards of the item deck. So she picked up two weapon cards. So she'll add those to her, her, to her inventory. And that makes her maxed out with her three cards, which is a combination of item and artifact cards. If we had more, then we would have to discard down. And that's pretty much all she can do, so we're ready to head over to Giles, who is going to go ahead and spend his tome as a free action to resolve its discard effect. So it says, during your turn, you may discard this card to draw one artifact card without using an action. So he's going to go ahead and discard this item to draw one artifact, which he found the Blessed Sword, which will allow him to perform a fight action to slay up to two demons in your location. And then there's an effect if you are wounded as well. So from here, then we can perform an action. So let's go ahead and perform the action to fight the demon. So this will allow him to fight up to two demons, which will kill them and remove them from his location. And that is his action. So we're going to move back over to Willow. So Willow is going to go ahead and perform a search action uh, or a use action to use this location's ability, which says that it, you can take two magic supplies from the item deck and then we'll have to reshuffle it. So we're going to go ahead and go through here and grab two magic supplies. And there's nothing else that she can do during her turn, so we're going to move over to our next character. So Buffy is the next one to go. So she is going to use another basic action to move. Now that she has two weapons, she can come over here and challenge the monster of the week. And like I said, normally you have to abide by the rules, but if I wasn't able to talk, this would be a really dull video since the first one we're facing is a gentleman which does not allow players to talk. So we're just going to go ahead and bypass that little one. All right, so that is her turn. We're ready to move over to Giles next. He would like to use this, this area's ability, but he cannot because there is an enemy in here that is not stunned, so he is not allowed to use that ability. So then with him, we're going to go ahead and let's see what his special ability is. is. He can reveal four items, choose two of them to keep, and discard the others. So let's go ahead and see how that works. We're going to go ahead and do a special action. So we're going to flip over the special action tile, and then we're going to resolve its effect. So it lets him draw four items from the deck. So he has a wooden stake, weapons, wooden stake, and garlic. So we're going to go ahead and take garlic, and let's go ahead and take weapons just in case... Uh, Buffy isn't able to defeat that monster of the week. The others are going to be discarded, and that is going to finish off his turn. So at this point, now we have to resolve an event since he did a special token. So this one says that a vampire lurks in the Summer's residence. 
So we'll place the vampire there. Then it has townies need help at the mansion. So we're going to place townies down here. Up there. And then the last thing is to place this card beside the game board. And until the end of the round, the suburbs of residence cannot be activated this round. So at this point, this is a lasting effect for the rest of the round. We will not be able to use this special ability on the Summer's Residence. Okay, so we're ready to move over to Willow again. So with Willow's turn now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at her special action. So she's going to flip her special action token over to do a spe her own special action, which is to discard any number of magic supplies. And for each one discarded, you're going to slay one baddie anywhere on the game board. So we're going to go ahead and discard all three of our magic supplies so that we can take out some baddies here. So baddies are both demons and vampires, so we're definitely going to wipe out that demon token there. And we got the two vampires up here, so let's go ahead and just clean them out. At that point, now that she's resolved that, then we have to do an event. So our event here says that there's a vampire that lurks in the bronze. And we have a townie in City Hall. And then it says, um, with this one, place this card beside the game board. Until the end of the round, vampires are going to deal an additional wound token uh, when they attack characters this round. So we got to be careful not to end the round with vampires as they're really going to hit us hard. Moving over to Buffy, she's the next to go. So she's going to go ahead and do her special action. And with that one, it lets her perform a move action and a fight action in any order. After that, then wherever she lands, she's going to stun all the enemies. So she's going to go ahead and do the fight action first, which will allow her to fight the, um, the monster of the week. So the monster of the week requires two weapon cards. So we're going to go ahead and discard those. And then we're going to do a check. So as you guys can see here, we're looking for either the pentagram or the triangle. So our event is the pentagram. So we have succeeded. And with that, that is going to kill the gentleman. So we're going to remove the Monster of the Week token. Place the clue token in their starting location, which just so happened to be Sunnydale. Uh, the UC of Sunnydale. And then at that point, then we're going to draw the next Monster of the Week card. So we have Luke. So with Luke, he appears in the Sunnydale Cemetery. And it says that vampires in Luke's location deal an additional wounds when they attack characters. So that is our next baddie that we're after. Then we have to resolve the rest of her effects. So at this point she can move anywhere. So she's going to go ahead and move over to the bronze. And we'll stun that vampire in her location. Now again, since we did a special action, we have to resolve an event. So we have a vampire in the Shadow Valley Vineyards. We have a demon in the magic box. And if there are any demons adjacent to a character, they move to that character's location. So we already have a demon in that location, so he's not going to move. So before moving into monster activation, there's one term that I want to clarify real quick, which is protected versus unprotected townies. So... An unprotected townie is a townie in location that has no characters in its location. Protected townies are going to have characters in their location. Each round after the final action token is flipped over, all remaining baddies are going to activate in a specific order, starting with the big bad first, then the monster of the week, and finally the baddies. So let's go in th through each one of these guys now and see how it works. So first off, with the big bad, First, you're going to check any of the revealed plot cards, and if any of those plot cards have start of monster activation effects, you're going to go ahead and resolve those, which at this point, we do not have any plot cards out, so we don't have to worry about that. And then next, it says, if a big bad has been revealed, add one wound to the apocalypse track for each character sharing its location, which again, we don't have a big bad out, so we don't have to worry about that. Next, we're going to start with the monster of the week. So with the monster of the week, he is going to, first off, if he shares a location with an unprotected townie, he's going to go ahead and kill it and add it to the apocalypse track. Otherwise, if he shares his location with a character, he's going to go ahead and wound one of those characters. If neither of these apply, then he's going to go ahead and move one location 
First off, he's going to move to a location with if he can reach an unprotected townie. Otherwise, he'll move to a location with a character. And if neither apply, then he'll move to the closest location that gets him close to one of those conditions. So with our, our Monster of the Week, he has a choice. He can go to one of these two locations. And the one that has the unprotected townie is going to be the one that he'll choose. Then we're going to go ahead and move into the rest of the baddie activation. So any baddie that, is, that, that we activate, we will activate every one except for the ones that are stunned. So currently out on the field is just one demon. So again, with the baddies, if they're in a location with unprotected townies, they're going to go ahead and kill one per baddie that's in that location. And if they're in a location with characters, they'll go ahead and wound a character. If neither apply, then the baddie is also going to move. Vampires will move one location, again going towards unprotected townies first, then characters second. And demons will move two locations. So at this point, the demon is going to move. He has a choice of these four locations for his first movement point, And this one will get him within a townie and a character. If we would have had the option of two equal spots, say, for example, Giles and this townie was over here, then the vamp, the uh, demon would have a choice of those two locations, and at that point it would fall to the characters. They get to choose where that baddie would go, so we could have them go to either location. It would be our option. Now that we've resolved all of the monster activation, we're going to move into the end of round sequence. So first off, we're going to flip over all of our stunned enemies that we have. Then we're going to follow any end of round instructions on the Big Bad's board. So if we look at his board, as you guys can see here, it says that a vampire lurks at each location containing a clue token. So since we have one clue token out, we'll place one vampire in that location. And then if possible, we're going to rescue townies. Remove one townie from the board for each character sharing a space with a townie, unless the location also contains any monsters. So Giles down here has a townie that he'll rescue, and Buffy also has a townie that she can rescue. Unfortunately, Willow Space has a demon in it, so she will not be able to rescue that townie. Then we're going to check and see if any of the passive locations have any effects we have to resolve. So if there was a townie in this location and Giles wasn't here, it says that after the monster activation, if there are any unprotected townies here, you're going to move one to the crypt. Then we're going to shuffle all discarded items back into the item deck. So we'll go ahead and resolve that. We will pass the first player token to the next player. And then finally all the players are going to flip over all of their action tokens. And then we're ready to begin the next round. Now that I've taken you guys through a complete round, there's a couple of things I want to cover. First off are the clue tokens. As you guys saw, I did not pick up the clue token right away. This is one option that you guys have. Anytime a character is in a location with a clue token, they can spend a action to perform a search, and that will allow them to pick up that clue token. When they pick it up, they're going to go ahead and reveal one of the plot cards from the big bad that they're facing for this adventure. And so you have a couple of options. You can either do this slowly, which will add difficulty to the game, as the plot cards are always going to be a negative effect each round on the players. But then you'll also know what you have to collect in order to fight the big bad at the end. Or you can wait and leave the clue tokens and defeat more monsters of the week and then pick them all up all at once or pick them up slowly after you've defeated that one. It's totally up to you guys how you want to approach that. So I'm going to take you guys through the sequence of summoning the big bad. So let's go ahead and say that Giles was here and that he picked up this uh, clue token, which happened to be the third clue token out there. So first off, once the third big, the third monster of the week is defeated, you would not reveal any further monsters of the week. And then let's go ahead and say that we already had two plot cards out there. So we'll go ahead and put two out there. And this would be our third plot card. So at this point, then we're going to bring the big bad out and we have to resolve his summoning effect. So it says, when the master reveals himself, place him in the hell mouth. And then you're going to do an event check for every two vampires on the game board. For each success, add one townie to the apocalypse track. So we have a total of one, two, three vampires. So we're going to go ahead and do one event check. So we'll flip over the top event card. And if it has a pentagram symbol, which it does, 
then that is considered a success. And so we would place one townie in the apocalypse track. At this point, then the game would continue. But at this point, we're going after the big bad. And we would have to eliminate all three of his plot cards by getting into his space and discarding those items that are necessary to do an event check. If we succeed in the event, then we'll discard that plot card. And if it is the final plot card, the big bad is defeated, and hopefully our players have won the game at that point. The third thing I want to cover real quick is the evil card. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that during uh, Buffy's turn, Giles became evil. So this card would be placed on Giles, and it says that we would take this card, and the next time you perform an action, instead expend one of your action tokens, and then make an event check to determine which of the evil actions on this card to perform. Then you're going to discard the card. So we would do an event check and match up the symbol that comes up on that event check with the symbols that are on the bottom of the card. After that symbol is resolved, then we can go ahead and discard the evil card. And keep in mind, if whatever symbol comes up, when you're resolving the effect, it is up to the player's discretion. So, for example, if we got the triangle, it says you activate one baddie. That's a baddie of your choice as the player. So don't go ahead and and pick one that is going to be bad for you. Go ahead and choose one such as the vampire all over here, if you have to activate him, as he's not going to do any damage to the characters. It is totally up to the player's how they activate that, their selection on that card. And then it'll be discarded as it's stated. There are two ways in which the players can lose the game. If a townie or wound token is ever placed on the end space of the apocalypse track, the players will lose. Or if you are ever required to place a wound token on the apocalypse track and there are not enough wound tokens remaining, the players will also lose. If the players are able to defeat the three plot cards on the uh, big bad before this happens, the players will win the game. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this video, if you enjoy what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel, as it does help me to continue to grow and bring new and exciting games to you guys. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and to leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it, and I take into account everything that you guys say to try to make the best videos possible. If you guys are interested, also swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts. Let me know what you guys are playing, what you guys are doing. Uh, if you guys have played this game, if you like it, if you don't like it, why and why not? I also love to hear from you guys, love to start a conversation with you guys about this game or any other game that you guys are interested in me covering or checking out. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.